2,500 tons of fake food. Tell us about that, Anthony. That's right. So overall, we keep hearing about all of these you know, horse meat substitutes being put into burgers and everything, but it turns out it's much, much, much worse than that. And Interpol with Europol seized 2,500 tons of actually fake food. Wow. And not just bad fast food, we're talking about vodka that was made in antifreeze containers that had antifreeze in it, and they would scrub it out with different chemicals, get rid of the scent, put vodka in it, and sell it as premium brands across the world. Wow. And they had seafood, they had lobsters being sold, they were completely fake, mineral water, dietary supplements, as we found out from New York, the attorney general found that about 80% of the supplements you get at Walmart and stuff like that in pharmaceutical drug stores are actually completely fake. So this is just one investigation that lasted two months. They found 2,500 tons of completely fraudulent fake food. And people are thinking that they're getting nutritious items or counting their calories, everything. It turns out that in many cases, you're not even eating what you think you are, let alone trying to avoid the additives and everything, which just blows my mind and highlights everything we continue to talk about to know what you're actually getting every single time. Absolutely. Yeah, we talk about this vaccine thing, and a lot of people lecture us on, you know, well, this is how vaccines work. You know, they, they create a response in the body, and the body creates antibodies and everything. We're not talking about that. We're talking about the fast food French fries that are not simply potatoes, if they even have potatoes in them, because they've added all kinds of preservatives to them. They've added uh, some of the ingredients to silly putty or whatever. You've got the situation that we talked about covered on the news uh, in Iceland, where McDonald's shut down in Iceland. In 2009, on the last day, a guy went in and bought a cheeseburger and fries. He's had it under a glass uh, container. You can watch a live stream of that on the internet. It hasn't changed in appearance now for six years. So, I, you know, we're not talking about, you know, it, it's all about the, the full spectrum. We, even when we talk about vaccines, we're talking about what has been added to them or doing them in combination. I mean, a lot of different aspects of it. It's not just as simple as like, well, you know, this is food. That food is used by your body to build bones or anything. It's like... No, there's other stuff in the food as well, even if it is food. <laughs> exactly, and I want to go through the list of top items that have been found to be completely counterfeit. Number one is seafood. Number two is mineral water. Three, dietary supplements with the herbs that aren't actually in the supplement. They find it necessary to fake water? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, it's big business because they can yeah. just take tap water and dump it in a, a bottle of water, usually plastic full of BPA, and sell it for $3. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a total empire. Mozzarella. Obviously, from Italy, that was a big issue. Pharmaceutical drugs. So you think you're taking Viagra, but you're actually taking a sugar pill. Or there's numerous scheme systems that get shut down online every year where they give you actually arsenic or something terrible like that. Eggs, dried fruit, and cooking oil. And you might say, well, there's no way we can actually do anything about this. But the director for the food regulation companies, <clears throat> he said, he went out and said in, in an article uh, with Time Magazine, that the answer is to actually eat organic and natural food products. Mm -hmm. And you might be wondering, well, why is that? It's because these counterfeiters from you know, Thailand and everything, what they do is they go after the big corporate brand names because there's just so much out there. You know, there's, let's say Coca-Cola or something, there's so much Coca-Cola out there that it's impossible to actually test and screen all of the Coca-Cola brands and everything like that. But well, we've seen that in China. They, they, they go in and they'll reproduce somebody's brand very precisely and then put oh, yeah. garbage in it, which actually creates liability for the companies. They were have a, had some uh, automo automotive brakes that they went in. Basically, instead of it being brakes, it was just paper. People were buying this and putting it on their car because the packaging looked the same. The uh, product looked the same, but it was nothing but paper. And then when they're, they had a, a car accident because these faulty brakes, they sue uh, the, the, the real manufacturer of this, which they thought they were buying. They thought they got a, a defective uh, product from these other people. It's, it's really rampant. Exactly. Yeah. So they just take over this corporate food system and to, they take advantage of it. But if you're buying actually local organic quality foods, you're not going to experience this. And it reminds me of how you did an amazing report on this. McDonald's, some economists say that they could go bankrupt within the next five to 10 years. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? It's because people don't want fake food anymore. Yeah, They are not settling for it. They're saying, I'm absolutely not going to risk getting any freeze bottles. <laughs> I'm not going to risk getting some of these ingredients that I like to talk about that are in many common McDonald's food items. Well, it comes down to the point. that's a form of fake to food, too. That's a fake form of food. It comes down to the point. You've you got to trust your source. Uh, you know, we, we try to get these independent third parties, whether it's government or it's an independent uh, watchdog agency, uh, to to vet the things that we're buying to see if they're safe, to see if it's if 
authentic or whatever. That's why I think so many times these large corporations will make the calculation that, hey, I can save a penny or two if I throw this synthetic uh, dangerous substance in here to give me a little bit longer shelf life. And they'll make that calculation because they're selling it in such large quantity, it makes a difference to them. Whereas if you work with a local uh, business, I go to a local restaurant or something, I'm thinking they're not as likely to adulterate their products in a dangerous way to save a couple of pennies because it simply isn't going to be worth it for them. For the large corporations, it may be a calculation that somebody says, we'll go with that risk. That's exactly right. Two pennies to McDonald's per ingredient. Mm -hmm. is a big, big, big deal. That's right. And that goes to back to why I think they're failing. I mean, look at this Business Insider report that McDonald's worldwide sales at restaurants uh, fell 2.2% just last month, okay? Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing is a decline in McDonald's. And there's numerous reasons for that, but ultimately people don't wanna eat the garbage anymore. And they could have five, 10 years ago, or when Super Size Me came out, gotten rid of some of these ingredients that I'm gonna talk about, but they didn't. Because a matter of a few cents for them is a matter of millions of dollars in their overall conglomerate. If they were smart, in my opinion, they would have removed these ingredients immediately. Because that's what they keep getting flack for. So it's just the fact they have- But it's really kind of in their business model, you know, because they do need to put this, these preservatives, these artificial chemicals in there so that they've got a very, very long shelf right, life. But they don't have yeah. to. I mean, yeah, there's, exactly. so, I mean there's, there's even organic fast food places now, mm -hmm. you know? They don't have to do any of this. If they want to make, you know, money off of people getting sick and dying, they can do this, mm -hmm. you know, but if they want to cut their profits by 0.002% and maybe have yeah. some alternatives yeah. or fund some options, some research, there are organic preservatives, you know, but I mean, they have breast implant chemicals in their chicken nuggets, uh, according to some of these reports. The San Francisco Gate, it's a chemical that's used in silicon breast implants and silly putty. And the mm. San Francisco Gate reports, the fast food chain makes this popular menu item with a chemical preservative TBHQ a petroleum-based product, and that's yeah. was at that point in the uh, Chicken McNuggets. And they have synthetic laxatives of, with the Wendy's Frosty. Contained in the Coffee Toffee Twisted Frosty, a laxative chemical and electronic cigarette filler known as propylene glycol is among the 25 new ingredients. 25 new ingredients that make up the special Frosty. It says, to be clear, this is a chemical link to a host of conditions including neurotoxic effects in children, Blood brain, uh, blood brain barrier issues, and much more. It's even illegal in cat food. Wow. So cats Yeah, but it's okay for it. Americans, and they have a different uh, standard for Americans that they sell to us, and things that they won't put in in other parts and of the world. And even these cigarette are companies the are trying to remove propylene glycol now, but they're just putting it in Frosties. Well, you know, there's a lot of awareness of that. We've had Food Babe on several times. She's had uh, uh, a lot of response from people once she focuses on some of these ingredients. The, the large corporations will, will back off of it when the light is shown on it. That's why it, it surprises me this disconnect over vaccines, for example. The people can't, they, they understand uh, the issue of additives in food. And there's a, a large building uh, movement of that where people want to get this stuff out. It's like, don't put cancer causing stuff in my soft drink because it changes the color to brown. I, I, that's not important to me. I would rather have it without the color, without the cancer causing chemicals, but they won't say that about vaccines. I, they just don't get the message what and, it's about. And that's the thing. The two biggest articles in my experience, writing probably 3000 articles total, are food item ingredients like this, like five, you know, four worst fast food ingredients they don't tell you about, right? Or vaccine additives and vaccine effects. Those are the two biggest shares. Uh, factors for articles. I mean, I'm talking about 20,000 Facebook shares in two, in two hours on some of these, or wow. a million Facebook shares. Uh, one of the articles about GMOs being burned got uh, 980,000 shares or something insane like that. People know, people are aware of this. I mean, they get millions and millions of views and people are obsessed with this type of stuff. So you would say, as a corporation, why are they not responding to that? It's because they can still get away with it. If we force them to not get away with it and we actually take the action and go there and don't buy the crap, which it looks like we're doing as McDonald's is just plummeting down mm -hmm. and economists are freaking out saying it's not a blue chip anymore, get away from it. Well, that's actually taking a change. When people say, hey, there's yoga mat chemicals in that fast food. I mean, literally, it was if you, if you use this chemical that they use in some of these McDonald's products in Singapore, it could be up to a $450,000 fine and 15 years in prison, according to these reports. That's very so, interesting. You know, I think it's very important what we've seen happen. Again, we're talking about the food babe as we put these other things out. There's people understand what this is. They're exercising their market power. That's absolutely. why we see McDonald's uh, sales going down. They're exercising their informed choice, their informed consent. 
That's the way you get this stuff out of the vaccines. You don't just ignore it and tell people, shut up and take it. You know, it's, it's almost like forcing us to go to McDonald's and, and you know, eat there three times a day or whatever. I mean, it, it, it's, you, you've got to approach this, I think, from, it's far more effective to approach it from an education and market standpoint than it is to come in and even uh, put fines and uh, jail terms on this stuff. Because we see so many times these regulatory agencies get captured by the corporations. That's a large part of what the problem is with big pharmaceuticals is that they've captured uh, these government agencies, the FDA, and, and captured the CDC so that uh, the real information is not, not going out. And I think we are achieving victory. I think across the board, I mean, we're seeing there's a reason, let's say this, there's a reason that 96% of Monsanto shareholders do not want GMO labeling. There was yeah. a poll of GMO shareholders in Monsanto. They do not want GMO labeling. McDonald's does not want GMO labeling. None of these people want you to actually know what you're getting. And you're right, they're winning by hypnosis. People are walking into McDonald's, they don't know what they're 